Hello underwater filmmakers. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the basics of DaVinci Resolve. So you can use the projects you had from before, or you can just do new projects. And for us, we're going to call it DaVinci Resolve 18 English. Enter. And then you arrive on this page. So depending on the page you had opened before, you're going to arrive on the page. For us, we're going to go on edit. Edit, and then you have this layout. So you have two windows, I'm going to explain to you later. Then you have the timeline here. And then on the left, you have the media or the effect or anything you want. So here you see you have media pool, but you see there is nothing in it. It's because we didn't import anything in it yet. So in your media, you can have clips, music or pictures, anything that you can put on the timeline. So to import, what we can do is just File, Import, Media, and then you go where your medias are. For me, they're on E. And then I put them in here, Clip for DaVinci Resolve 18. And then I can click here, or select More, and then Open. Do you want to change the frame rate? Yes, because I want the good frame rate for the clips I have. So I hit Yes. Now I have some of my files here. But if I want to open more, so I can go here, import again, media. And if I want to import all of it, as you can see, I cannot import folders. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to backspace and remove everything. Another way to do it would be to double click here, pick my folder, and then bring it all at once. And now I have my clips here and my two folders. So it's pretty much organized the way it was before. On the left side, you have the master here, which is the clips I just imported. You have the power bin. In it, you have things that you put in and want to keep forever. For me, I have some logos, some sound effects and stuff like this. If you want to see the clips bigger, at least to have more real estate here, you can click on this one. And like this, you only have the clips you selected. And here on the top, depending if you want a longer timeline or a shorter one, you can decide to have this one to go all the way down on that. Then in here, you can choose the size of your clips. And then you can choose also how you see them. So here it's a picture with the file information on the right. Here it's just a list. But personally, I prefer this one. And also this one is cool because if you just put your mouse on it, you can see what's happening. On this window here, you have everything that is on the left side. So if I double click on here, then I can see this clip. So I can see what's going on here. I change, I bring this one. Okay, then I see what's going on. On the right window, we're going to have things that are in the timeline. The timeline is just numbers and then we're going to put things in it. Okay, no. So now that I explained how it works a little bit, I'm going to show you how to import clips and cut them and change them a little bit. So for example, we want to import this clip, so we can just go here and then drag and drop and here. And then we have here the timeline that shows us what happened. So this clip actually starts very dark and then I change my settings and then it moves. So here, I'm not very happy with the beginning. Actually, maybe I can start from here because it's the first clip. So now I want to shorten it. I have a few ways to do it. I can do Ctrl B and then it cuts it here. And then I have two options. I can do backspace and it's going to keep the space here. Ctrl Z to come back. Or I can do still select this one or I can do delete. That's one of the options. And when I delete, as you saw, it's bringing everything and filling up the, the blank space. Another option would be just to grab it here to the left and bring it that way. And then I can bring the whole clip to the left. I can bring it back to its length. And the final option is Control, Shift, and this. I don't know the name of this, but if you know, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments. And this actually cut the clip and filled up the space. Now we can play with the space bar. And I can see on the right my clip. So my candy crab is moving the arm. And at the end, it's moving and shaking a little bit. So 
probably we want to close it here. So same thing, I can grab it here, I can cut and remove, so or I can do shift control and this one. Okay, so a few options to cut a clip. If I wanted, I could have cut the clip also from here. So let's say, for example, I want this one, okay, yawning frogfish best of, I double click, it's here now, and I can play. Okay, let's play it from the beginning. I play. Oh, it's starting to yawn, so I'm gonna go back a little bit. And then I can just press in. That's gonna be the beginning of my sequence. I play more. Okay, finish yawning, okay. Okay, cool. I can put O for out here. And you can see here, you have two lines, and here actually you have what is selected. And if I bring this clip here, it's gonna bring only what I selected. This is not cut. The, the clip is still the same, but it's just what I choose to bring to my timeline. So now I have a few options. I can click on this one, and it brings it just after the timeline. I can do Control Z, or I can grab it and put it here like before. And the final option would be to go here and then append at end. And actually, what is interesting, I'm going to go Control Z again. Even if my timeline was here, when I do append at end, it's always going to go at the end and move my playhead. Now, I want to put another clip right in the middle. So I can take, for example, my hairy shrimp. Okay, it looks nice. Okay, at the end it's blurry, so I can finish, for example, here, out. And the beginning seems to be okay. But it would be too long, so probably start from here, in. And then, like I said before, I can just use this one, and it's going to go in the middle and push this one to the right. Like so. So now I have my three clips. I'm going to take off the mixer. And you see, in three clips, my timeline is almost full already. So let's put the orangutan crab. Okay, maybe out here, in from here, and let's put it at the end. And now you can see right away that my timeline had to move because it was full. So to move the clips, I can use the middle click, grab, and then move everything. But as you can see here, I don't have all my clips. So what I can do is change it from here. So I can do minus, and then it's gonna get the timeline a little bit shorter. Actually, everything, every clip will take a little bit less space. If I do like this again, and if I go plus, it's gonna get bigger, okay? Plus, minus. Another thing that I can do is go on this one, and this one here, will actually make what is near the playhead super big. I can go back where I was. Another option is this one, full extend zoom, which is gonna bring everything to the right size. Actually, let's look at this. If I remove the left side, it's gonna get my clips a little bit bigger. And even if I take this one and place it at the end, it's always going to make sure that everything stays in my timeline and that I can see everything. So it's very interesting, especially at the end, if I want to do corrections and see what's going on in all of the sequences. So let's cut this one again. Okay, yawning. Okay, let's start here. So shift control bracket, I think. And then Okay, here's the end. And then this one. So now we have all of our clips and they're in the right order we decided. We took the space we wanted and everything. At this point, we could decide to move some of the clips. For example, we want to move those two clips here. Well, there are a few options to do it, but that's not the point today. We could, for example, take one, bring it up and then go like this and then move the other things around to do it. Be careful though, if you have two clips on top of each other, you're only gonna see the one on the video that is the highest. Only if it's, for example, a text, then that's gonna be different. 
But other than that, you're only gonna see the one on top. Okay, so let's put it back where it was. At this point, we can decide that we want to put some music. So to put music, we go on the music we have and we pick a clip right here. We put a sequence right here. And then, of course, because it's taking the whole length, we see what we have. The music is different than the clip because even if I have two different audio lines, we're gonna hear everything, okay? So you may need to reduce the level of the sound of one of the audio. For example, here, it's gonna be, for example, just bubble noise and stuff like this, breathing noise. It's not so interesting. So what we can do is just go on here and you see the two triangles here, and then I click, it says zero dB, and then I bring it down. So what I did, I just brought down the volume of this particular clip. Control Z to come back. If I want to do it for all of the sequences, I can select everything on top, and then I will go on the inspector, and here I will pick audio, and then I can reduce the audio volume of all of the sequences. For example, minus, 11.6 dB. And you see now that all of those have been changed at once. If I want to cut my audio, I can go again like this, and then Control B, and then I select and I put Delete. So let's say that's the whole clip I want to do. Now I can add a few things. For example, here the music is not gonna stop the right way. So what we can do is just grab this one and go like this. That means there is going to be a fade out with my music. Also, for the clip here, I can decide that here is the last frame I want to see like this. And then I go like this as well. And I can get the sequence to fade out. I can do it in all of other things. But for now, that's only at the end. And maybe, for example, at the beginning that... Oops, no, I have to grab this one and then go like this. And it's going to start by fading in. Then I have my sequence. Okay. Second sequence. And so forth. If you want to go from sequence to sequence, you can click up and down. And it's going to go from one to the next. One of the things that is interesting as well is this little magnet here. It was on, so it was always stopping right at the intersection of two sequences. If I take it out, then I can really go where I want and there is no help. I can really finish like a frame away. So if you want to work precisely, for example, to cut the extra, but not be bothered by the magnet, you can take it, take it off and then you can do your shift control and like this. And then when you want to go from clip to clip, it's gonna, get stuck at the intersection. In between, you can move it freely, but if you get too close, then it's gonna pop right at the cut. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. I will do video on the color page to help you to get better colors with your footage. I will go on the fair light, and I will even talk about delivery to make sure that you know how to export properly your clips. Don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell, like this you will be notified. And if you want to come to Bali, see some of those amazing critters with us, you can come dive with us at Proof Diving Bali. Bye bye, happy bubbles.